warming seas, giant dredgers, and millions of cubic feet of earth being drawn from the ocean floor, Mexico is redefining its topography literally. In the Gulf of Mexico, an engineering marvel in progress is one that has the potential to shift not only Yucatan but world trade itself. But beneath the engineering wonder is a greater enigma. What is really fueling this record-breaking soil extraction? Is it trade supremacy, political maneuvering, or something even grander? And at what cost to the environment? The breathtaking responses might redefine how you view the future of Mexico. If this kind of story touches your heart, if you're someone who cares about truth, responsibility, and speaking up for the voiceless, please like this video, subscribe to our channel Spark Science, and share it with someone who should hear it. Let's get started. The Yucatan Peninsula has traditionally been characterized as a paradox, a place of staggering natural wealth, historical gravitas, and unparalleled beauty, but constrained by its own geography. To understand why Mexico is now extracting hundreds of millions of cubic feet of soil from the Gulf, one must first understand the sleeping giant that is the Yucatan itself. The roots of this peninsula go back to one of the most cataclysmic events in Earth's history. Around 66.5 million years ago, a six-mile-wide asteroid slammed into what is now the northern edge of Yucatan. The effect was apocalyptic, forming the Chicxulub Crater, a colossal bruise over 90 miles wide and 12 miles deep, covered up by layers of limestone and earth. Scientists call it the smoking gun that killed the dinosaurs, paving the way for mammals, and eventually humanity, to rule the world. Thus, Yucatan is not merely a spot on the globe, it's the birthplace of the modern age. Its own origins are a tale of devastation and renewal. Forward to the present, and the land speaks to resilience. Dense jungles cloak the peninsula, providing habitats for jaguars, monkeys, and scores of bird species endemic only here. Subterranean is an armature of cenotes, formation holes where limestone dissolved into buried riverways. These clear waters connect in extensive networks. To the ancient Maya, cenotes were heavenly gates to the underworld, to modern scientists, they are geological marvels that hold records of climate, biodiversity, and human history. Posing beside this is white sand beach after white sand beach, extending into infinity, contrasting with turquoise seas, beckoning tens of millions of tourists annually. Behind the poster-perfect scene, however, lay a region beset by constraints. The same limestone that creates cenotes makes extensive infrastructure construction challenging. Worst of all, the shallow waters along the Gulf Coast kept up-to-date ships from coming in for anchorage, keeping Yucatan severed from world sea lanes. While Veracruz, Manzanillo, and Lazaro Cardenas rose to become dominant ports, Yucatan was kept on the sidelines, an envied cultural gem, but not a vital trade pathway. This was richly ironic, for Yucatan sits in one of the most strategic positions in the Western Hemisphere. Closest to southern U.S. borders, the Caribbean, and Western Europe, its geography should have positioned it as an international logistical center where goods come in all directions. Rather, its shallow seas put it into dormancy, sleeping giant, waiting for a spark. National development resources poured into central and northern Mexico for decades, where infrastructure and manufacturing flourished, and left the peninsula to tourism and agriculture. But change came at last in 2025, when Mexico unleashed one of the most ambitious ventures in its history to wake up the Yucatan giant. By then, the need was irrefutable. Mexico's two-way trade with the United States had reached a record-shattering $840 billion in 2024, making Mexico America's biggest trading partner for a second consecutive year. The merchandise moving across the border was phenomenal, auto parts, electronics, oil, farm produce, and consumer products, all connected to Mexico's exploding position in world supply chains. With nearshoring gaining speed, Monterrey, Guadalajara, and Mexico City factories buzzed at record capacity. But manufacturing is one thing, getting it delivered efficiently around the globe is another. Contemporary trade is not reliant on highways or aircraft, but on gigantic vessels, post-Panamax and new Panamax ships a football field and a half long and holding 24,000 containers per trip. They need deep, broad channels and world-class ports. 
Mexico has only a few of these ports, Veracruz, Lázaro Cárdenas, and Manzanillo among them, but conspicuously lacking was the Yucatán Peninsula, which sits in ideal geographic position for Caribbean and transatlantic commerce. Without a deep water port, Yucatán's exports were limited to diverting via Veracruz, adding time, expense, and inefficiency that compromised competitiveness. It wasn't merely an inconvenience, it was a structural impediment that risked constraining Mexico's emergence as a global trade leader. Here, nowhere more so than Progreso. On which the world's longest pier juts four miles into the Gulf, Progreso was originally a daring solution to shallow water. Constructed in the 1930s and enlarged in the 1980s, it became the maritime lifeline of Yucatan, carrying agricultural products and cruise liners. But with the passage of time, shipping changed and Progreso's limitations increased. With a depth of just 40 feet and a channel width of 492 feet, it was unable to receive today's megaship safely. Most ships had to go around the port altogether, making the long loop to Veracruz and racking up days and thousands of dollars in expenses. For importers, this translated into rotten fruit, delayed shipments, and increased costs. For exporters, it translated into unreliable supply chains. Progreso's pier, this icon of creativity, was a pier to nowhere, a wonder of construction that could not be used for the future. Confronted by this paradox, Mexico adopted a bold solution, if shallow waters were the issue, they would redefine the seabed itself. One of Mexico's biggest dredging operations commenced. Engineers set out to excavate 353 million cubic feet of sediment, extending Progreso's fairway from 40 to 44 feet and broadening the channel to 590 from 492 feet. While the difference is small, in nautical terms it translated to the capacity to receive the world's biggest cargo vessels. To carry out the feat, Mexico hired Mexicana Dragados, a Mexican subsidiary of Belgium's Jan de Null Group, with a reputation for such grand feats as the expansion of the Suez Canal. Beginning in June 2025, Progreso's waters were abuzz with enormous dredgers, seafaring factories, as it were, trailed by suction hopper vessels that vacuumed sand and silt from the ocean floor and moved it back for land reclamation. Cutter suction dredgers bulldozed hard-packed clay with spinning heads, pumping slurry ashore. Observing them in operation was akin to viewing a city constructed in reverse, with land being excavated from the sea. This was not engineering but symbolism. For centuries, shallow waters had prevented Yucatan from being open to the rest of the world. Now, with dredging in full swing, geography was no longer destiny. But ambition had risks attached, delays, cost blowouts, and technical issues threatened, while others questioned whether the project would complete by its 2026 deadline. Nevertheless, optimism won through as cranes went up, channels were deepened, and new land platforms rose. Progreso was no longer a pier to nowhere, it was becoming the hub of a maritime renaissance. The economic spillover was staggering. Exporters could now ship products straight to Europe and the US without the expense of detours. Fresh fruits and honey would be fresher, manufactured products more competitively priced. Importers enjoyed reliability, driving prices down for local companies and consumers. Shipping lines envisioned new, efficient routes. Investors flocked, purchasing land close to Progreso and Merida for factories, warehouses, and distribution centers. Employment followed, from dock workers and crane operators to engineers, IT experts, and small entrepreneurs. Tax coffers swelled, funding roads, schools, and hospitals. Projections indicated Progreso's volume could double within five years, making Mexico's eastern seaboard a critical connector between North America, Central America, and Europe. But with each shovel of seabed came environmental prices. Dredging disturbs ecosystems, agitating sediment plumes that bury coral reefs, seagrass, and fish nurseries. Sediment barriers were used to counteract this, and dredging was suspended during fish spawning and turtle nesting. Mangrove replanting schemes tried to recreate natural defenses against erosion and storms. Autonomous monitoring stations monitored water quality in real time, warning scientists of danger. Nevertheless, Green groups were still wary, 
cautioning that long-term effects may not appear for years to come, and that even the most stringent precautions could not render dredging green as a whole. Inland, meanwhile, another megaproject was growing, the Trenmaya Railway. Spanning 965 miles across five states, the line connected Progreso to interior Mexico. Initially envisioned for tourism, it came to be an artery of dual purpose for passengers and cargo. The 43-mile rail connection from Merida to Progreso became revolutionary, enabling containers to transfer easily between ships and trains, reducing inland expenses by 20% and transit time by half. With multimodal terminals at Poxil, Progreso, Cancun, and Penjamo, merchandise could flow from Europe to Mexican factories in hours, not days. The synergy was fantastic. Progreso's port and the Tren Maya together promised to rebrand the economic identity of Yucatan. Foreign investors swarmed in, agroindustry companies set up new exports, manufacturers looked forward to saving costs, 